Kyal, uh, I've just read a rather disturbing article in one of the papers today which says that uh, the protests that are taking place in the USA against Donald Trump are being orchestrated by certain Muslim individuals. So, uh, are Muslims being targeted in the media? Is there some kind of insidious conspiracy against Muslims? Or is there some kind of uh, Muslim lobby or Arab lobby operating? Uh, are there any Muslim business interests involved vis-a-vis -vis Trump that are operating and orchestrating these campaigns against him? Especially the women's campaign, I believe, is being pushed by a, a lady who's strongly into promoting Sharia law. Is this correct? Yes, it is. Now, first of all, there's always been a Muslim lobby. Probably the grand lobbyists of the Muslim world are the Saudis, going back at least to the Clinton age, if not earlier. Maybe you could argue FDR when he cut the deal with them. But starting in the modern era, from the Clintons on, and George H.W. Bush, the Saudis have been um, poured tens of millions of dollars into the lobby efforts in exchange for American uh, compliance and, and looking the other way and not pushing the human rights issue because we want that oil. Now that America is much more oil independent and has actually outproduced the Saudis, we're still in the interest of being what's called politically correct today, not holding the Saudis accountable for human rights abuses. So here's the irony, Ajit. So are you trying to say that the Saudi lobby is behind this or is there some individual behind this? Because of the article I read specifically mentioned that the protests being organized by the women out there were being spearheaded by somebody who was into Sharia law. Yeah, there, there's, there's the Saudis then there's CARE, okay, which has long been in the pocket of the Muslim Brotherhood. They've supported Hamas. They try to, their goal is to impose Sharia law over time in the U.S. They hope that through demographics, eventually uh, there'll be enough Muslims where one day Congress will be staffed full of Muslims and would vote into law a Sharia-driven country. That is their long-term plan. It's not going to happen overnight, but that is their plan and there's no question about it. You have to remember that under Obama, shame on him, CARE was given basically a blank check. Under previous administrations, they were co in they were co unindicted co conspirators in terrorist attacks, laundering money, sending millions of dollars to Hamas and even <coughs> Al Qaeda. Now, we're, regarding what's happening present, yeah. most of the protesters are upset that Hillary lost. If you take out, if Hillary were in the White House today, they no, would be Hillary, protesting. No, but Hillary, I think, had a Muslim assistant. Her name was Huma Abedin, right? Yeah, she was very close to Hillary, I believe. In fact, uh, I believe uh, the Muslim lobby was actually, or the Arab lobby was actually pushing for the Clintons to come to power. They were. In fact, Huma and her mother edited a radical publication that was an anti-woman. It uh, was pro-Sharia law, and that's something the left-wing media isn't going to touch. But it's a fact. She was editor Can for Can we come years. to the basic question here, Cal? I mean, the Sharia law and uh, women's protesters, is there any link between them? There is. What these women are doing is they're protesting that Hillary lost. They're using Trump's comments made 12 years ago as an excuse to protest against Trump. They're overwhelmingly pro-Hillary types. They wouldn't be having this protest if Hillary had won, but these are what are called useful idiots, and I don't mean to offend anybody. I support the right to peaceful protest. What I don't support is people like Madonna getting up there saying she wants to blow up the White House. Now. What these people don't know, because they have been used, is that the woman who started this is pro-Hamas and is pro-Sharia law. And I got news for all of you people who want women, women's rights out there. Sharia law is not compatible with women's rights. If you like to be covered and wear burqas and have your rights taken away as a human being, then go embrace Sharia. I believe uh, Sharia law is one thing, but the laws in the Saudi Arabia Arabia itself are extremely anti-women. Are women allowed to drive cars in Saudi Arabia? No, and in Iran, if you don't cover yourself, they'll send you to prison. So, you know, these are very draconian laws. They're absolutely anti-feminism. There are people who say, no, no, this is how a woman should be. So these well, women... And actually, that's very surprising, Cal, because if you look at the growth and the advent of Islam, the Prophet Muhammad was in favor of women actually coming out. He was in favor of women's education. He was in favor of women coming to the mosque to pray. All these things have been set aside by uh, the rights of women under Islam are actually been hijacked by a new set of laws, which we actually think are Sharia laws. 
Well, I'll be blunt with you as a Westerner. When a so-called religious prophet says, oh, women have the right to pray in a temple, we should, there, it, it shouldn't even be an issue. I'm not going to be impressed when somebody says, oh, you have the right to be here too. It shouldn't even be discussed. I'm not a Muslim. I'm just saying you're right that the so-called doctrine has been hijacked. That's up to the individual countries. But I'm not impressed when somebody grants rights that should be universal. It's like, duh, no kidding. That's my view on it. Thank you, Dan.